Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and in this video, I'm going to be unboxing and installing the new Corsair A500 High Performance Dual Fan CPU Cooler. This was released at CES 2020 in early January, and I was actually there at the press conference when they announced it, and I was frankly shocked, as was the entire crowd there, because Corsair had not released in an air cooler since 2012, so eight years in the making. Of course, in the meantime, they've been dominating the liquid cooler scene. And I and a lot of people ask, well, why are you doing this? What's what's the reason? And you've got your liquid cooler lineup. Why come out with a high-end air cooler? And what they said was they were really trying to reach out to a market that they weren't addressing with their, their liquid coolers. A uh, more traditional market, people who don't want all the blingy lights, who perhaps don't want some of the associated noise with uh, air, uh, liquid cooler pumps and maybe are a little bit still afraid that liquid coolers are unreliable. People still ask me that all the time. So I know people out there are just, they want high performance, but they don't want liquid. Okay, so Corsair said, well, we've got liquid covered. Let's try to cover the air market as well. And that is what we have here today, the A500. So I am going to be unboxing it. I'm going to be uh, sh uh, comparing it to the Noctua NHD15 in terms of the size, just so you can get a sense for what Corsair is doing with this cooler. And then I'm going to I'm going to show you what it looks like in the system. Now I'm not going to be running any benchmarks on this today. They may come in a future review. So for now, just enjoy the video, get a sense for what this cooler has to offer, and of course, hopefully, it will also help you understand how to install it in your case if you've got one in your hands and want some extra help. So I will catch you in a second. So here I've removed most of the components from the box and the cooler itself here actually came completely pre-assembled. This is exactly how it looked like when I pulled it out of the box. You can see it's fairly tall. It's actually 170 millimeters tall. It's also big from front to back. It does have a little bit of space underneath for RAM, but if you have anything other than low profile RAM, you're gonna have to use this novel sliding mechanism to raise that front fan up above your RAM slots. And that is actually pretty nice. You don't have to use fan clips and mess around with them. Another nice feature is this top part that actually pops right off so you can get access to your mounting screws. You can also see your four heat pipes here. And that pops right back on, no screws required. That's, that's really nice. To mount the system, you're gonna be using these brackets. Uh, these are the Intel brackets. There's actually separate brackets for AMD included in the box. This is Corsair's branded thermal paste. Uh, there's actually thermal paste pre-applied, and, and this, there's enough here for probably three or four additional applications, so you don't actually need that for your first application. Here are the standoffs. These are the Intel 1151 standoffs that I'll be using. They're separate standoffs for other Intel uh, sockets. It actually comes with a screwdriver, and the reason you need such a long screwdriver is to reach down inside the middle of that cooler and access the mounting screws. You also have a fan splitter because of course you have two fans. And then here's the back plate. Let me show you up close. This back plate actually has some insulating rubber pads. But interestingly, I noticed that the manual didn't mention you should actually remove the backing off of them. That's just some cover over the tape. And the reason that you want an adhesive rubber pad is that you can actually stick it on, into place on the back of your motherboard and make sure it doesn't fall off when you're installing it or uninstalling it. But the manual didn't mention anything about that. And speaking of that manual, you know, it looks comprehensive, but frankly, like a tenth of it is in English, and the rest of it is in every other language you can think of, which is why the manual is so long, but frankly, it's not that comprehensive, and that's why I'm doing this video, to help you understand how to install this, because really, there are very few English words in this manual. I mentioned that the thermal paste is actually pre-applied, and Corsair said they did this because the direct uh, contact heat pipes are a little hard to apply thermal paste to, so they did that for you. And here's a comparison to the Noctua NHD15. You can see it's actually pretty much the same size. It's not quite as wide, but it's just as long from front to back. And it's actually five millimeters tall as well. And in some ways, Corsair has one up Noctua in terms of making the installation of a big cooler easy. First, it's pre-applied the thermal paste. If you do have to reapply, make sure that you do lines down each of the direct contact heat pipes. You also have the adhesive on the back plate. Now, I'm not gonna use the adhesive because I'll be taking this cooler on and off a lot, but you can go ahead and do that so it stays put when you're installing these thumb screw standoffs. Once those are on, you go ahead and install the brackets. Make sure to line up the holes with your socket. So for 1151, it's actually the middle of the three holes, as you can see there. Next up, I will attach the four thumb screws. I'll just tighten those by hand first, and then I'll use the included Corsair screwdriver to tighten them down. And notice how I go from 
corner to corner in order to equalize the pressure on the mount. You don't want to just tighten one down all the way without tightening each one down a little bit. Before I actually attach the cooler, I'm going to plug in the fans. Notice that one of the PWM headers here does have a missing pin and that's by design. You always have that when you have a Y connector like you use here with the A500. All right, the fans are in and I'm ready to install the cooler. First, I will raise that front fan to give me clearance for my tall Corsair RAM. Then I'll remove that top panel so I have access to the screws and I lower it in place. Notice that I am actually installing this standing, with the case standing up, it's gonna be much easier if you lay it down, but I couldn't do that for filming purposes. As always, we go back and forth, back and forth with the two tension screws in order to apply equal pressure to both sides of the cooling plate. They are spring screws, so they'll let you know when they're fully tightened and you'll just stop screwing in at that point. Now the cooler is fully in, all I have to do is attach my fan cable to the CPU fan header. Notice that the fan, the front fan does clear that RAM because I was able to raise it with this innovative system. That being said, it will be blowing some air above the heat sink, so it may not be working at 100% efficiency in this configuration. All right, now I'll snap that top panel into position and the cooler installation is done. And here's the system powered on and the fans spinning. You can see it looks really good. It has that industrial look that will probably appeal to people who don't want the blingy RGB look of liquid coolers. As always, I'm Ari for the Tech Buyers Guru. If you have any questions, post them down below. Please do like and subscribe, and I will catch you soon.